Vitamin E, also known as alpha tocopherol, is a fat-soluble antioxidant vitamin found in sunflower oil, corn oil, soybeans, meats, fruits, and vegetables. Its antioxidant property allows it to protect erythrocytes from free radical damage, so its deficiency can lead to increased fragility of erythrocytes, which in turn causes hemolytic anemia. Other signs of vitamin E deficiency include muscle weakness and posterior column and spinocerebellar tract demyelination. Also, excess of vitamin E can interfere with vitamin K metabolism. Vitamin K, also called phyloquinone, is a fat-soluble vitamin that is mostly acquired from intestinal flora, but also found in some vegetable and animal sources. It's used in the liver to produce clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, and protein C and S. This is because it's needed for a step called gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues on these proteins. This mechanism is discussed in more detail in the Hemonc chapter. For now, keep in mind that it involves oxidation and reduction of vitamin K, and the enzyme epoxide reductase converts vitamin K from its reduced to its oxidized form. The drug warfarin inhibits epoxide reductase, thus inhibiting the function of vitamin K, which in turn prevents the gamma carboxylation required to produce clotting factors. A deficiency in vitamin K can occur in neonates who have sterile intestines or after antibiotic use, since the primary source of vitamin K is intestinal flora. People who are deficient in vitamin K can't produce enough clotting factors, and are therefore at risk for hemorrhage. Labs will show increased PT and PTT, but a normal bleeding time, since platelets still function normally. To prevent this, neonates are given an intramuscular injection of vitamin K at birth. Zinc is a physiologic ion that is essential for the function of over 100 enzymes, and helps proteins such as zinc finger transcription factors achieve the structure they need to function properly. Here's an image of part of a zinc finger transcription factor, in which you can see the protein in blue and the zinc ion in green. Without zinc, the protein can't fold properly. Deficiency in zinc can cause delayed wound healing, hypogonadism, decreased axillary, facial, or pubic hair, dyskeusia, which means distortion of taste, and anosmia. It can also predispose patients to alcoholic cirrhosis. The reaction for the metabolism of ethanol is shown here. Ethanol is first oxidized to acetaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase, which occurs in the cytosol. Next, acetaldehyde is further oxidized to acetate by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Notice that the second step occurs in the mitochondria, and not in the cytosol. NAD is used in both reactions as the oxidizing agent, and is a limiting factor in this reaction. Alcohol dehydrogenase operates via zero-order kinetics, which means its rate does not change based on the concentration of alcohol. Several medications can be used to treat alcohol poisoning and to maintain abstinence in alcoholics. Fomepazole inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase, but it's not used in situations involving excess ethanol. Instead, it's used as an antidote for methanol or ethylene glycol poisoning. This is because alcohol dehydrogenase is also used to convert methanol to formic acid, which causes visual disturbances in methanol poisoning, and to convert ethylene glycol into glycolate and oxalate, which cause renal damage in ethylene glycol poisoning. Acetaldehyde is responsible for the symptoms of a hangover after excessive alcohol consumption, and disulfiram, or antabuse, is a drug that inhibits acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. This is actually a bad thing physiologically, because it causes a buildup of acetaldehyde and therefore causes more severe hangover symptoms. Therefore, this drug is used to condition patients to abstain from alcohol in the future. A third alcohol abuse drug, which we'll discuss more in the psychiatry chapter, is naltrexone, which is an opioid receptor antagonist. Therefore, this is a centrally acting drug that's used for alcoholism. One consequence of chronic alcohol use is fatty liver, or hepatosteatosis. This occurs because alcohol disrupts the normal pathway of glucose metabolism. As we saw on the last slide, metabolism of ethanol requires the reduction of NAD to NADH. Thus, alcohol use will decrease the amount of NAD available and increase NADH. The change in this ratio of NADH to NAD causes pyruvate to be converted to lactate and oxaloacetate to malate. As you can see by looking at where those fit into the big picture, since oxaloacetate and pyruvate are the starting substrates for gluconeogenesis, this means that alcohol intake has an end result of preventing gluconeogenesis. This is the cause of hypoglycemia seen in chronic alcoholics. Higher NADH to NAD ratios also stimulate fatty acid synthesis, since that utilizes NADH, which in turn causes the hepatic fatty change you see in this image. The fat cell infiltrates are these white blobs, and the red things you see are Mallory bodies. Mallory bodies are made of keratin and are common in alcoholic hepatitis and cirrhosis, but can you think of any other diseases in which you might see them? Some examples are Wilson's disease, primary biliary cirrhosis, and hepatocellular carcinoma. Now we'll briefly go over malnutrition. Quartier core is a state of specifically protein malnutrition, which manifests as skin lesions, edema, anemia, and liver malfunction with fatty change. Protein deficiency can cause edema because proteins such as albumin maintain the oncotic pressure of the vasculature, without which blood can leak out into the surrounding tissues, which is edema. 
The clinical picture of Quarshirkor is a child with thin limbs and a swollen belly, which again is caused by edema. You can use the mnemonic MEAL to remember the signs and symptoms of Quarshirkor. Marasmus, on the other hand, is an energy malnutrition in which there is insufficient overall caloric intake. These patients present with tissue and muscle wasting, loss of subcutaneous fat, and variable edema, which you can see in this image. It's important to remember that unlike marasmus, quartier core can occur in patients with a normal caloric intake as long as they have a very small amount of calories from protein.